Hello, Roderick Wallace here. How are you? Just about to enter the woods here. Currently on the edge of the road, sitting in the van. Sorry, Hermione. And, uh, <clears throat> I did make a video which very quickly summed up the notion that the ancient statues that we find, the, the ancient Egyptian statues, are actually meditation postures. It doesn't mean that they are only meditation postures, uh, but that is one of their symbolic functions, if you like. And the more time goes on, the, the more I see this, the more I believe this, the more ex experientially I discover the, the, the truth of this notion. Magical Egypt is a wonderful series. I've only seen the first series, actually. I, I do need to invest in uh, later episodes. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if they've covered this, if they've quite discovered this fact. Um, who knows? Because it's it's so immediate, it's so obvious, it's so hidden in plain sight. But it's only when you when you take up the practice from an hermetic point of view that it becomes real. It becomes real in your life. And uh, in my own strange. Kelto Egyptian uh, musings, my journey. Uh, if, if we look through here, just, just quickly first, we see this seated figure. Sure enough, there's writing going on. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't obscure the fact that the uh, the posture is precise and uh, um, if you were going to write, it might, you know, surely you would um, employ a table, wouldn't you? Be, that's what we do now, but there seems to be something, I, I guess it adds a kind of religious process to uh, these magical, um, hieroglyphs this sacred writing it brings it into line with uh, a sense of contemplation perhaps obviously a meditation posture one which i've actually seen my teacher perform and sit in for long periods of time which uh, i find amazing to be honest um very painful that one He looks happy though. Now, standing like this for me, just, just the first time that I stood like this and engaged in meditation, it felt like the most natural thing in the world. And these statues, they always show the left foot, foot forward, the arms to the sides. I actually chose to bring the left hand to the, the breast and count uh, the beads. Uh, I got this, um, uh, this actually happened intuitively, but I, I later noticed it on the, the, those strange Celtic slash Buddhist slash Egyptian statues from round about 500 uh, BC that were unearthed in France. I've talked about that before, fascinating. So... When we shift this to the pharaohs, look at this, the idea of balance comes into play. This is another meditational component. This practice, this standing posture in order to create balance. Now, like with a lot of things that are meditational and magical, uh, the, the, modern, the modern rational mind cannot see the usage it's only when you uh, 
take an intuitive chance and start practicing these things uh, that you discover their worth. You wouldn't know unless you'd done it. And um, it's only when you put a little bit of time in when you persist that you will uh, reap the, the benefits, if you like. And uh, um, it takes a little while to become in tune to the um, the balancing process within the body, mind, etc., etc., system. So Pharaoh there, kingship. These statues as well. Um, I'm sure I covered this before that many of them are, are, are the, the crafts. The craftsmen's the craftsmanship is so mind-bogglingly difficult um, uh, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that machines had to be involved well it doesn't necessarily mean that it had to be machines per se but at least some kind of unknown technology um, so when you put that together with this idea of uh, extreme spiritual practice, this notion of kingship and balance. Uh, it's like they're striving to achieve the perfected man. And the perfection of the art is a byproduct, but also, uh, uh, you might say, a demonstration of ability, which goes alongside the practice. Everything starts to make sense intuitively, just, just on the edge of the mind. Um, but quite often you'll find that the hieroglyphs um, are just scratched in and they're very rough. They're just cut into the statue uh, without the same precision and care and ultimate skill uh, that the rest of the statue has been executed in. And um, you'll find a lot on Ben's Uncharted X channel uh, about this subject. He's, he's done some amazing work on this. So it's beginning to look like a lot of these statues, they're not, these statues are not the uh, the pharaohs, if you like. The pharaohs are aping the images in the statues that they inherited. Seems radical, but if you give it some time, um, it becomes very difficult to look away from. So there we have Set and Osiris, the the good and the bad, if you like, in, in a very simple sense. This war going on and the figure uh, who strives towards kingship remains imperturbable, balancing these forces within himself. So, again, in this one, the pharaoh looks, at, the head is angled slightly upwards. I'm sure you can bring to memory these images, um, hieroglyphs, etc., paintings of these figures with a, a kind of like a five-pointed star attached to the uh, the forehead with a, a kind of beam, a line. This connection with the stars, and I love the way that these statues. The there's a kind of blankness to the eyes. They have a kind of trance, especially when the head is angled up slightly upwards. Um, I recognise that feeling, that connection. So what are they connecting with ultimately? I mean, this works on many levels, right? But ultimately, ultimately... They are connecting with the stars, the cosmos, the creation with origins and, uh, you might say, um, the ineffable and ultimate power. The hermetic idea that you travel upwards, uh, you retain 
uh, you br you bring back a prize which you which you retain and and, and br bring back down the hermetic ladder, the ascension, and the uh, the coming back into daily life, bringing uh, the fruits with you. The fruits that, if we just bring this down to the level of not only sitting, but now literally standing in meditation. Being very exacting about the posture, the angle of the head, perhaps. Um, I'm sure there's different tweaks that you can do, but you should seek to perfect the form for long periods of time. Maybe contemplating the stars or a divine principle. What would happen to you? What would you bring back? Well, <clears throat> there's only one way to find out. So uh, I'll leave you with that to ponder. Thanks very much. See you in the next one. Take care.